our salvation is threefold. The first part of our salvation is to be justified. The second part of our salvation is to be... Anybody? It's the word I just used. Thank you. Sanctified. The third part of your salvation is to be glorified. Justification, sanctification, glorification. They're all parts of your salvation. Justification, when you become a Christian. When you're justified and made right before God. Sanctification, when you're set apart and you live the kind of life you should live because you're justified. Glorification, when we lose this body and we become glorified and live in heaven forever. Three parts of salvation. All three are important. Justified happens once, and it makes us, you know, justified for our lives. But sanctified is living the set-apart life, living differently. People say, oh, you're a Christian. How come you don't? We, went, we sat at a table last night at this military dinner. Half the people at my table, we all did the toasts. Half the people did the toast with the alcohol that was provided for us, free of charge. Could have a whole bottle, you know, paid for it at the dinner. Or, and half of us used just our glasses with water in it. And the couple next to us, Lieutenant Colonel's wife, use just water. I thought, interesting. Could be a couple reasons. Could be faith, could be, you know, uh, alcoholic, you know, former alcoholic and, and, and doesn't drink alcohol. During the conversation, found again the born again believers, you know, and that was their choice. Sanctified. That was part of what they said set them apart from the world. I don't drink, you know. I'm not saying that's the only, the only possible uh, position on that, but I'm saying that set them apart. This is one thing they're not going to do that everybody else does. And there are other things that we don't do. We don't use, hopefully, foul language. People are going to notice it sets us apart. We're set apart, sanctified. He says, sanctify or set them apart. Um, how many people have China closet in their house? Okay. Do you have China in it? You know, maybe something you got from your grandmother or somebody else or a friend or something. When do you use those dishes? Every day? Are they your everyday dishes? Uh, I see some women laughing at me. <laughs> Absolutely not. You know, they come out when you have guests over. You know, they're sanctified. They're set apart, you know? And when we got company over, oh, we bring out those dishes, Christmas and Easter for us, you know? And then you wash them all, don't put them through the dishwasher, and put them back. They're set apart. We are to be set apart. And he says to them, consecrate your ver yourselves in verses 10 and 11 and be set apart. The Lord also said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow and let them wash their garments and let them be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come on the Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. And you were to set bounds for the people all around, saying, Beware that you did not go up to the mountain or touch the border. It was to be set apart. They were to be different. And if you, as you look through this whole part, he says, Then put up these boundaries. Don't let the people come and touch the mountain because I'm God. And there was a certain separation that took place. But he, they needed to be consecrated. They needed to be set apart. Wash your clothes. I'm told that when the Jewish scribes would scribe the words when they came to Yahweh, which they won't even say the word. They don't want to desecrate it that way. The scribe would go wash his entire self first and then come back and write that word and continue on because they hold, held it in such holy reverence. Do you get the concept of, you know, I mean, we come today and we kind of meet God and it's just an ordinary thing. Once a week we come and meet God and, you know, we'll talk to him over the week, you know, kind of thing. This is a big deal. They had to consecrate this. They just set apart. Obey the covenant. The, meeting God was a big thing. And too much today, I think, we just kind of, no, we'll go to church. We'll talk to God. We'll have a fight on the way in the car, and then hope we can put on our smiles when we walk into church so nobody knows it. Maybe you're smiling about that. Come on. That happens to me sometimes. I know it happens to you guys, you know? Uh, you got to put on the smile, put on the dress, come here and act like everything's nice, you know? And then, uh, but preparation for coming to church just doesn't seem to, you know, uh, and I'm not saying we have to do it. I'm just saying, Think of the awesomeness of this. God wanted to tell them something. He wanted to make an impression. And as you look through the scriptures, oftentimes the first time was an impression, what, what happened, and they, they made special impressions of things. But, um, and I, uh, I was going to bring my trumpet this morning and scare you all, but I thought it'd be too, you'd be able to see me. I wish, I wish Adam played trumpet. I would have let him play one right now. <laughs> Boom, right out of, the, out, of the, out of the balcony there and scare you off after death. But, but look at what it says here in verses uh, 14 and 15. 
So Moses, or, um, 12 and 13, let's go back there. And you shall set bounds for the people all around, saying, Beware, you shall not go up to the mountain and touch the border, or whatever touches the mountain uh, shall be surely be put to death. No hand shall touch me, but she shall surely be stoned and shot through, whether beast or man, she shall not live. When the ram's horn sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. Um, then Moses went down from the mountain of the people and consecrated the people their garments. He goes back down and they do the stuff. And he said to the people, be ready for the third day. Do not go near the man, go near a woman. Don't even have sex during this time. You know, you're preparing for coming to the mountain to meet God. Um, and so it came about on the third day when the, in the morning. Can you imagine this, this, this picture here? It came out when in the morning that there was thunder and lightning flashes and a thick cloud upon the mountain, a very loud trumpet sound. Okay, Adam, that's your cue. Play it, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, the, the trumpet sound. So the, all the people were in the camp trembled before they came to God, trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and his smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked violently. When the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him with thunder. Oh. You know, big. It was loud. This is an awesome God we have. I should look in the Old Testament. Jericho. Achan stole something. What happened to him? Remember? He was stoned, you know? First time event. God wanted to make an impression on him. Don't do this. We look at other things. We, we, look, at the, uh, we look at the event of, uh, say, the first time in the New Testament, Anasias and Sapphira come to give a gift, and they lie to him. Okay. By the second service, we'll have the cue for that, okay? <laughs> we'll have that right. Uh, but uh, the, the New Testament... <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, this, I mean, that's what it was. I mean, you, can you imagine if you're not expecting also all this stuff is happening at the same time? And, and now the fire's here, and we've seen God in fire before, right? We saw in the burning bush. You know, and we see the fire the, in, the, in the cloud at night that he leads them by. I mean, the fire, they have a whole mountain smoking, you know. I mean, the, this is an awesome thing. In the New Testament, Ananias and Sapphira came first. They lied to the Holy Spirit about what they were giving in their money. And what happened to them? They were killed on the spot. Boom. I'm glad doesn't, God doesn't kill us based on what we give to God, huh? Might be a little bit frightening. But he makes a statement the first time because he wants it to make an impression. And that's what he's doing. He wants to make an impression on this people of who he is and what he is like. And so he said, consecrate and wash yourselves. And all this stuff takes place. And then he gives a fourth message. And the fourth message is found in verses 20 to 24. And the Lord came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain. And the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain. And Moses went up. And the Lord spoke to Moses, Go down, warn the people, lest they break through to the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. And also let the priests who come near to the Lord consecrate themselves, lest the Lord break out against them. And Moses said to all the people, to the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou dost warn us, saying, Set bounds around the mountain and consecrate it. And the Lord said to him, Go down again and come up, you and Aaron with you. But, warning again, like, you think this is important? Do not let the priest and the people break through to come up to the Lord, lest they break forth upon them. And Moses went down to the people and told them. What is his message? Don't break through to me. Moses can talk to me. You cannot. Do not break through. I am a holy God. You'll die in my presence. Do you understand how, how almighty God is? The, 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 the purity, the holiness. There's some great hymns in the, in the hymnal. I wish we had time to read them. Immortal, invisible, God only wise. Holy, holy, holy. A mighty fortress is our God. Take out some of those hymns and just read the verses. Maybe this week when you're doing your, if you have your devotions or you want to start devotions, you know, read the text uh, you know, to some of those. Um, I think we have some old hymnals. You can borrow an old hymnal if you don't have one. And, and look up some of those words or look them up on the internet. God is awesome. But you know, what's, you, know what con, you know what I think is so contrasting here? Don't break through to me. Isn't that discouraging? You know, do all this preparation, but you can't get to me. Look 
with me, and I again, this is a whole sermon, but we're not going to preach it. I'll give you a little bit to, this week. If you want to, if you want to contrast it, go to Hebrews chapter nine and ten. Read through those two chapters to find the New Testament answer. But I just want to read to, to, to you one section of this. Hebrews chapter ten, verses nineteen to twenty-two. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus. By a new and living way, which he inaugurated us for us through a new and living, uh, only through that veil, the veil that was torn, that is his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the household of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith. Write down chapter 9, verses 1 through 15 also, if you're trying to write something down to look at this week. I won't read it, that's extra credit stuff. Let me read one other verse, Hebrews 4.16. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we, we may receive mercy and find grace in time of need. What a contrast. To Israel, don't break through. Don't touch the mountain. To us as believers, because Jesus has now paid the penalty for our sins and died on the cross, draw near to the throne of God with confidence and ask for mercy you need mercy today? Is something happening in your life that you need help with? God says, come to me. Jesus Christ is the mediator between man and God. When he died on the cross, it says the veil which separated this holy of holies and the tabernacle which represented God, it was rent, it was torn from top to bottom. God tore it, not man. And said, so now you have access to me. Because Jesus Christ has paid the penalty. So contrasting to the message to the, to the Israelites, do not break through, the message to you is draw near with confidence. Our theme to close out this morning is this. Obey, listen, sanctify yourself, and draw near to me. Obey, listen, sanctify yourself, and draw near to me. That's our job as believers. If we can follow that one theme, this one passage, and, I, and I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, I read this, and when Pastor Scott and I are going through, we kind of split up the sermons, and whoever gets the sermon for that day, I mean, we don't say, I want this one or I want that one. It's based on our schedule. He's out picking Ashley up this weekend, so I got it. And I read chapter 18, and I thought, man, how am I going to preach on this? I mean, there's, you know, come meet God, you know? There's nothing here. But boy, when you get into it, it's a, it's a, it, it, this is a groundbreaking thing for how we approach God and the respect we have for Him. I hope it's changed your perspective maybe a little bit of who God is. He's the same in the Old Testament as the New Testament. He's the same awesome God and the same things. Keep my covenants are repeated in the New Testament. But the one thing that's different is in the Old Testament, it was don't break through. Talk to your priest, talk to Moses. And the New Testament's draw near to me with confidence and request mercy. I'm there to help. And once you accept Jesus Christ, I will give you my Holy Spirit to live inside you and accompany you every place, every day. Dear Lord, we thank you for your love for us and for the, the privilege of being able to talk to you, come and worship you, and not have to, to be fearful of not touching the mountain. And as the some of our folks are up here to pray afterwards. If there's someone here that wants to pray to you, that we thank you that they can just come and with the body of believers, we can talk directly to you and you listen and hear and answer. May we go out today with a renewed sense of the awesome God that you are. Thank you in Jesus' name.